So starting with extroverted feeling. So as you mentioned, extroverted feeling is about um, understanding emotions outside of us because we use them for information, to read content from others, to let us know how they're doing. I would say that the core of this function on its most simple terms is rapport, right? We, it's, the, it's the experiencing energy from other people and then cycling it out and then putting your energy out and then receiving and then giving and receiving and um, giving energies. And so that is effectively rapport, right? And when you're in rapport, then you get tuned into whether or not everybody's okay and what needs are going unmet, and if everybody's in a good place and in good simpatico, and it's just kind of making sure everybody's all right all the time. And so there's two different styles of being tuned into that. The first one is the analytic style of extroverted feeling. Now, this is really interesting because I think people who have a more analytic version of extroverted feeling or harmony oftentimes think they're thinkers. Right. Mm. It's very common. And um, Dario calls them the shepherds. That's what or at least this function analytic is the shepherd function. And so just like we've mentioned before, analytic means it's focused, it's goal oriented, it's more assertive. And that's that holds true with extroverted feeling or harmony as well. It's about voicing society's values. Right. It's shepherding people to ensure that the values that the person using this function have determined are important. Shepherding others to ensure everybody's on board with those values. Now, they might do it in a very diplomatic way. They might say things like, you know, hey, we, we, we should probably talk and get this worked out. But at the end of the day, what they're trying to do is corral everybody to ensure that important important interactions and values between people and in culture and society that that nobody's being too much of a um too much of a renegade against them well nobody's draining the system right mm-hmm. no one's pulling on the group more than their share yeah yeah exactly and so it's important to corral outliers right yeah. it's like who's Who's not paying attention to these important values? Those are the people we have to get on board. And there's a sense that if we can all just get on board with these values, we can just solve all the problems (laughs) and, and, and it can go big, right? Because it's analytic and analytic tends to be more goal oriented and more assertive. Then it goes from smaller interactions into like, into sometimes into whole societal thinking, right? Everybody needs to get on board with this value. Because if not, I mean, and like maybe a couple people can be outliers, but let's make sure that they understand that they're not cooperating with, with the system and society and culture. And so because of that, there's going to be consequences. Yeah. yeah. Well, and they're not wrong. I mean, look at what this has done for societies. We have manners and certain behavioral expectations that actually has made our world better. Imagine, you know, living during Roman times when you could be on a road somewhere and get killed or there's like... There's all these other, there's like social expectations that keep us safe outside of just like legalities and law enforcement, right? right? We kind of just expect that humans will treat us a certain way. And so I think if there is enough consensus, you can change culture to have different expectations, different outcomes. Yep. They're right in a lot of ways. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and especially since the fundamental goal is to do it for one's own and everybody else's good, mm-hmm. right? There's a real desire to create win-wins. And there's a desire to see people healed and make sure everybody's doing okay and, uh, and, and make sure that, you know, like the, the system isn't sick. I think that's ultimately what analytic extroverted feeling or harmony is attempting to do. The challenge is that, um, not everybody agrees on those values. And so if a person has this, um, the analytic version of this, in a one-sided way, in an attempt to help, they might actually become a bully, Mm -hmm. right? In an attempt to make it better for everybody, they might end up, you know, actually having some acceptable losses, right? And uh, and in part, they're willing to do big sacrifices for this greater good. So you're going to have to do big sacrifices too, right? Yeah. Whether or not you agree with their assertions. (laughs) There's a great part in the show, The Good Place. I don't know which episode or season it is, but they talk about, we change, because they're talking about how to be a good person or bad person or whatever. They're like, change behavior first and people's hearts will follow. 
And I feel like that's such a shepherd, extroverted feeling harmony viewpoint is like get right action, get consensus, get everybody moving the right direction. And then people will learn to like it. Their hearts will follow later, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, the other thing this could also show up at is something like an arranged marriage. Like we're going to construct something that makes sense. Yeah. Maybe you don't feel like you love that person now, but go ahead and arrange it. You're going to learn to love them later over time, mm-hmm. right? Because we're going to force this, we're going to make this thing happen. And then you're going to accommodate your own internal sense. You'll match, your heart will match the external framework later. Yeah. But let's get the framework going first and then let your heart catch up. Yeah. And that's a hard concept for Westerners at this point to really consider because we haven't done that for so long. Yeah. That was the standard social contract for most cultures around the world for a very long time. Yeah. It's only in recent times that we're not doing that. And a part of it is because it's, you know, to some extent kind of makes sense and is good for everybody. And, and we make sacrifices as individuals for the greater good. And so I agree with you. I think, I think that kind of, I mean, like that kind of arrangement does feel very shepherd, um, extroverted feeling or harmony. Yep. By the way, uh, we are starting something very new here at Personality Hacker. Now you might be listening to this years from now. And so it's something that's gone on for a while, but as of the time of this recording, it's fairly new. We're starting up an experience of our podcast live once a week online in a virtual format. So what we're doing is we're gathering a group of like minds to come together once a week to watch this podcast together. And then right afterward, we have a membership program where people can come. It's called a personality quest. And we talk about the podcast right afterward. We unpack the learning from it, how we can apply it to our lives. And then we give the entire group of people that have gathered an assignment or a challenge for that week, some journal prompts and some reflection, but also a challenge that week to go test out in their real life, to go explore in the world. All of us are going to do the same challenge that week. And we come back the following week, we talk about it, unpack it, and we get the learning from it. And every week getting together to do this, we've already been doing a few weeks. It's been fantastic. I've loved doing it. It's awesome to see people come and gather live to watch the podcast, talk about it and go do challenges in their own lives. You should be a part of this. If you're listening or you're watching, we want you to be part of it. Uh, currently we're doing it on Sundays. You can find out more information to be part of a personality quest. If you come over to personalityhacker.com forward slash quest, and you can learn all about the quests and what we're doing there and get yourself involved. Cause I think you're going to love this experience, especially if you've loved the podcast and you love personality types and personal growth and the intersection of those two things. It's one of the things that I am super excited about going forward with. Mm. So, and there's going to be some live elements to that. And there's a whole bunch of stuff that we've got planned around this. But right now we're just starting with these weekly gatherings and I'd love for you to be involved. Uh, Dario mentions that they can be really inspiring orders. And in an organization, they're going to help everybody be aware of the organization's values and get in sync as best they can. A church pastor is an obvious example, but the extreme is cult-like, right? So yeah. that's when it goes bad is when we're getting people a little too on board, even against their, their better judgment. Uh, mostly they're inspiring, advising, corralling, and shepherding, but there's going to be some black sheep around who don't want to be brought into the pen. And this is where maturity versus one-sidedness <laughs> comes in. <laughs> so again, that bullying can come from, a, from the one-sided version of this. And, uh, and, you know, we talk a lot about how extroverted feeling or harmony is about getting people's needs met. And I, um, I remember somebody taking some exception to that. I think the person had ENFJ preferences and they didn't really resonate with that description. And they probably actually have shepherd. I mean, I would suspect that if they have ENFJ preferences and they don't really resonate with that piece, uh, that they probably have the shepherd version or the analytic version of extroverted feeling or harmony. But I see it as a lot of times the analytic versions are like the writ large versions. Mm -hmm. So it really is about getting people's needs met. It's it's just not doing it on an individual tuning into one to one person element. It's more like all people's needs. And that's really what culture is about. Culture and society to some extent. It's not the only thing it's about. But one of the things it's about is making sure that we all as a society and collective, if at all possible, are mostly okay in getting our needs met. And so um, I think the shepherd version of this still thinks in those terms, but does it on a, uh, to scale, right? You can't spell culture without cult. Yeah, (laughs) right. (laughs) And when it speaks to that, you know, you mentioned cult leader at the worst extreme example of this. And so I think that's the one-sided piece is, you know, that buy-in, that consensus buy-in, it's almost a cult-like nature culture has. Mm -hmm. Obviously that 
rubs me the wrong way, but I understand it. I know it's needed in a lot of ways in, in society. Um, I am one of those black sheep that they're trying to corral yeah. often right. and bring into the fold yeah. that doesn't like to play well, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. Well, and again, maturity comes in here. If it's one-sided yeah. without maturity, if it has no, and we'll talk about holistic extroverted feeling in a moment, but if, uh, I mean, the goal, and sometimes people go, well, I think I have both sides. Can I have both? And it's like, yeah, you want both. You actually want both the analytic and the holistic. As we've mentioned in the previous podcast, the goal is to have a really beautiful balance of the two because the balancing act is where like the magic happens. Mm -hmm. If you're too one-sided, too analytic or too holistic, and you don't have enough of the other side, usually that's a sign of a lack of maturity and it does rub people the wrong way. Even if you're extremely diplomatic about it, even if you're super nice about it, it doesn't matter. It will still rub people the wrong way because at the end of the day, you're saying you need to sacrifice your individualism in behalf of what I believe is the greater good. And it's like, well, who are you? Yeah. <laughs> Why do you get to decide that? <laughs> and I think the maturity comes into play and we'll talk about the holistic version but the maturity comes into play in not being so aggressive about one's own assumptions of values. I think the other way this can go too, though, is, you know, we talked about in the very first episode, this idea of top down. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've talked about every episode, but I said, it's like you have a hammer and all the world's a nail. Mm -hmm. I think top down for a shepherd, extroverted feeling or harmony person or, or this energy in the function, maybe the person's not the, the thing, but it's the function is, uh, you know, that writ, that writ large idea you said it's not even getting needs met. It's signaling that we're the type of people that would get needs met if there was a need here. Right. There's a lot of signaling going on. That's like in an abstraction mm -hmm. because it's not about the actual people. That's the need. It's like setting the framework. And so we signal back and forth that that's the type of people we are. And I need you to signal it to me. And it actually isn't solving anything. It's just making, it's ensuring that at the top level, the highest level top down, we're missing a message that this is how we're supposed to behave. And we all need to signal this together. Mm. And I think a lot of people are confused on what's going on there. Mm -hmm. But I think that's that analytic push, extroverted feeling or harmony to say, you know, you need that marker to show that you're a safe person. You're in, you're in the group with everybody else. And I think that's what's often... Um, I would say for people outside, it's very confusing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree. And uh, tag that. I just tagged it because I think after we talk about the holistic version, you can see how a merging of the two will help solve that. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, there's an underlying assumption that if everyone joins arms in mutual agreement, consideration, and cooperation, aligning and honoring values and behavior, then any and all problems can be solved. That's the underlying assumption of the shepherd extroverted feeling or harmony um, energy. And I think a lot would be solved, but not everything, right? And so um, there's, a, uh, there's a willingness, though, to make sacrifices, big sacrifices. But there's also an expectation everybody's going to make big sacrifices. So the beautiful things that come along with the analytic version is increased leadership. Again, a lot of times people who have the analytic version of this function think that they're TJ types. I think that's very common. But it's a it's it's diplomacy, it's articulation, it's leadership, it's a shepherding capacity, it's corralling, it's teaching good lessons, right? There's a lot of positive stuff that comes along with it. But there's also some assumptive thinking. There can be some bullying, right? Un whether intentional or unintentional. And um, and so it needs to be balanced with another energy. Yeah. So let's talk about that other energy. <laughs> 